A Synopsis of Alcoholics Anonymous, History, Philosophy, Literature, and Information of AA as a Spiritual Path by Michelle Roth. The preamble of Alcoholics Anonymous states, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. AA can be traced back to a non-denominational religious group in the 20th century called the Oxford Group, which existed in both Europe and the United States. The Oxford Group's objective was self-improvement using self-analysis, admitting one's mistakes, and making amends, then spreading the message on to others. An American was guided to the Oxford Group for help with his problem drinking by renowned psychologist Carl Jung, and was in turn helped by the group's principles, which resulted in help for AA founder Bill W. with his alcoholism. In 1935, Bill W. took the same basic ideas of the Oxford Group to help himself get and remain sober after years of tribulations and numerous hospitalizations for his alcoholism. The principles and camaraderie of the Oxford Group worked well for Bill W., and he began to wonder if perhaps the same method could be helpful to others with drinking problems. Though his initial attempts to help others were unsuccessful, he eventually requested advice from fellow advisors and alcoholics who recommended to him not to preach, but rather view alcoholism as an illness. When Bill W. met an alcoholic named Dr. Bob, he realized through some trial and error that one alcoholic helping another through their illnesses had a much better success rate, and the premises of AA were set into motion. June 10, 1935 is the date of Dr. Bob's last drink, and considered the founding day of Alcoholics Anonymous. Bill W. and Dr. Bob began the task of helping other alcoholics in hospitals and the communities in New York City and Akron, Ohio. After some time, they realized that many of the people following their basic symptoms, system was remaining, were remaining sober at a time when cures for alcohol problems were unheard of and considered not only incurable, but shameful. The idea of spreading the message of one alcoholic helping another to get and remain sober on a larger scale emerged. After some debate on how to fund the program, it was decided that this would be a program that is self-supporting by its members. Bill and Dr. Bob sat down to write the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, with the basic principles for alcoholics to live their lives by if they expected to remain well. They also began the Big Book, which was initially printed in 1938. The Big Book is essentially the Bible for alcoholics trying to recover from alcoholism within the program of AA. It is a history of the program's founder, Bill W. and Dr. Bob, and their simple comprehensive how-to guide to remain sober. The book was written in 1938 and has gone through very limited revisions over the years, only enough to include new members and ideas relating to changes in time. The principles remain true to their original form. The book also includes many examples of possible scenarios for the purpose of those who may read the book wondering if they are in fact alcoholics. The main focus of Al the Alcoholics Anonymous in the Big Book is the 12 Steps. If the Big Book is AA's Bible, then the 12 Steps are its Ten Commandments. The 12 Steps are a detailed plan on how to move forward with one's life without alcohol, and are listed as follows. Step 1. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, and our lives had become unmanageable. Step 2. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to stan sanity. Step 3 made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God, as we understood Him. Step 4, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step 5, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Step 6, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step 7, humbly asked Him to remove our shortcomings. Step 8, made a list of all persons we had harmed, and became willing to make amends to them all. Step 9. Made direct amends to such people whenever possible. 
except when to do so would injure them or others. Step 10. Continued to take a personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Step 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for the knowledge of His will and the power to carry that out. <clears throat> Step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. Chapters 3 and 5 of the Big Book are frequently used on a daily basis for recovering alcoholics and those in the program and are read at each AA meeting. Chapter 3 speaks frankly about the situations that lead to alcoholism and ways many alcoholics have tried to control or change their behavior. Chapter 5 is a detailed description of the 12 steps and ways to follow the AA program's examples. They are by far the most well-known parts of the Big Book. <coughs> Other readings pivotal and well used in the AA program are 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, Daily Reflections, and How Bill Sees It. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions gives an in-depth analysis of each step with chapter formation of how to follow them, as well as information of the 12 Traditions of AA and what they mean to the group and its members. Daily Reflection is a book given, used to give spiritual encouragement and enlightenment on a daily basis, carrying a message for each day of the year. The Daily Reflections is designed to be used on its own, but is also read at each AA meeting. Oftentimes its passage is used as the subject for such meetings, if no one else has a subject to bring up at the time. As Bill sees it as a book on the life of Bill W., and includes some of his own thoughts and writing that are not included in other AA literature. Its popularity is due to the fact that many in the program idolize and respect Bill W. so much for the way he has shaped and changed so many lives through the years. In more recent times, the subject of alcoholism has become less taboo, and writers in our time have come forward with their own stories of their struggles with alcoholism and have published written works on their own experiences. The most notorious examples of this would be Augustine Burroughs and James Fry. Though AA was initially founded from the basis of the Oxford group and its principles, Alcoholics Anonymous is not by design a religious organization. It does not have any denomination, therefore does not consider itself to be a religion. There are, however, many religious aspects, rituals, and ideas that are at the foundation of its program. The program is not only non-denominational, but free from any condition, conditional religious constraints. AA trusts that only the belief in a higher power or something that is larger and stronger than ourselves can relieve the desire to drink. There are no issues or qualms as to what the higher power is for any one member. It can be called or thought of as the Christian God, Allah, Muhammad, or the boulder on a truck on the interstate that no human being could possibly lift. It could be the program of AA itself, or the hope and desire for health and wellness. The purpose is to know that there is some force or entity that has more power than one's own self. Though it doesn't matter what the higher power is, belief in it is basically mandatory. It is also one of the larger struggles for newcomers in the program. Belief in a higher power is what enables the alcoholic to believe that there is help available when it is asked for. It's a way of ensuring the alcoholic stops concentrating solely on one's own problems and circumstances and believes that there is a greater purpose to life itself. Belief in a higher power and being willing to turn over your will to this and letting go of one's own control, ego, and plan. Generally speaking, it is the letting go of one's old ways that releases them from the grips of needing to drink and also allows space for something newer and better to come along. There is a common misconception that Alcoholics Anonymous as a group and entity is a sad, morose lot, coming together daily to drown in the sorrows of their lives during AA meetings as a replacement for drowning oneself in drinking. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Although AA meetings do involve the sharing of one's lives, good and bad, the negative aspects of life are not centered upon. There is a certain amount of time spent early on going through the wreckage of one's past what happened when the alcoholic was drinking, and what negative impact that had on the person and those around them. However, this is a relatively short joint called a fourth step, and is something that was meant to be moved on from so that the recovering alcoholic can learn from and then move on from such events. Just like everyone else, members of AA can be wonderful people or complete jerks, 
depending on the person individually. As a general rule, however, members of AA are a relatively happy lot who enjoy the lives they have because of the perspective that they've gained from being in the program. Each knows that they could just as easily have died, and more often than not, almost did. Should any member forget, there are the unfortunate and all too often occurrences of members who relapse and die of overdose. And as a member of this group, this is something that one needs to come to terms with. Even with the number of casualties, there is what would be considered a surprising amount of laughter and general happiness within the group. Each clubhouse and meeting has regulars where the group becomes close-knit and very much